FLM, wide open thinking, world-class work, and far-reaching results. Now with locations in Minneapolis, Columbus, Indianapolis, and Washington, D.C. A strategic marketing and communications company dedicated to serving clients who specialize in the business of agriculture and the life of rural communities. Thank you for joining us for our Washington Week interview. I'm Spencer Chase, joined as always by AgriPulse senior writer Phil Brasher, discussing the week that was, agriculturally speaking, in Washington, D.C. And what a week it was, honestly. <laughs> we have the first week of the Donald Trump administration. Uh, a lot of action uh, coming out of the White House, a little bit of activity coming from Capitol Hill. Uh, most of that related to a trip up to Philadelphia that a lot of uh, congressional members and uh, Phil Brasher as well took here this week. A lot of things to unpack. We're going to do what we can to do it with, uh, with a little bit of level of brevity and and, uh, and briefness, but uh, there's a lot of things to get to, to be honest with you. Uh, really, the, the first action that uh, President Trump took as President Trump, and this was something he had pledged to do so for quite a while, was uh, withdraw the United States from the Trans-Pacific Partnership. This was a campaign promise that he had held for, for quite some time. He did that earlier this week, and uh, in, in some comments since, has uh, made some interesting comments uh, as people, people are deeming uh, to have potential ramifications for trade relationships with other countries, particularly Mexico. Now, uh, uh, savvy followers of the news may be aware of the fact that uh, Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto was supposed to come to Washington next week. Then, talk of a border wall erupted, and uh, that trip has since been canceled. Phil, a lot of things up in the air right now with regards to week one of the Trump administration, what that's going to mean for trade, particularly with the United States neighbor to the south. Yeah, well, right out of the gate, uh, as promised, uh, President Trump um, picked a, uh, a fight with Mexico. He, uh, one of his, he, uh, one of his uh, priorities this week was issuing a couple of orders. One of uh, on, on immigration. One of them is on border security. He called for building the wall. He called for having Mexico pay for it. Uh, that's what set off uh, you know, the political uh, uh, backlash in Mexico. And the president, uh, as you just said decided to cancel the trip. Also, there was a series of tweets from the, from the White House as well that probably uh, played, into that, mm -hmm. uh, played into that decision. So um, here we are. And then in the same afternoon, this was uh, Thursday afternoon, um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the trip gets canceled. Uh, President Trump spoke to the uh, lawmakers up in Philadelphia, talked about trade, talked about wanting to do one-on-one -on -one, uh, bilateral agreements as opposed to the TPP, didn't go into details, didn't say what countries uh, we would pursue for, but he pursue these deals with, but he uh, did say that, again, that he wanted to do only bilateral, one-on-one, -on -one, as, he, as he described it. Anyway, he gets on Air Force One, heads back to Philadelphia. His um, uh, press secretary, Sean Spicer, briefs the press and starts talking about uh, paying for the border wall with uh, what was described as a border tax. Um, we can uh, talk about that a little more, but that's, it, it's, it was actually a major feature of the House Republican tax reform plan. Uh, uh, rather complicated, but uh, major development in terms of both the congressional agenda and uh, and our relationship with Mexico and our trade policy. Well, and with that trade policy, uh, talk is continuing out of the White House and out of the mouth of President Trump specifically about his desire to renegotiate NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement with Canada and Mexico. Uh, talks were expected to occur on that subject next week with uh, with the President of Mexico. Uh, now, uh, who knows when, when formal negotiations and formal discussions will happen between the two governments with that canceled trip. But in relation to the relationship between the United States and Mexico, there was also some other news that came out of the United States uh, this week that is going to be particularly important to agriculture and uh, immigration and farm worker policy because obviously the intention getting headline for the rest of the news gathering world was that President Trump is making, uh, making inroads on trying to build his border wall. But Phil, in terms of agriculture policy, there's some other interesting ramifications here in his immigration policy. Right. He actually issued two orders. One of them was border security. That's the one where he called for building the border wall, he called for adding 5,000 uh, border patrol agents. But the, uh, but the order that's probably more important to agriculture is the uh, domestic enforcement uh, 
uh, order. It calls for adding 10,000 agents at Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. These are the these are the agents that go into workplaces. They go in and, and they do the deportations. Um, also, coupled with that, he listed uh, the order lists the deportation priorities for uh, for ICE and uh, Immigration and Custom Enf Customs Enforcement, and it's a very broad. Um, taken together, these various priorities, uh, a lot of uh, farm groups feel would capture just about most workers on on farms that say have uh, fraudulent IDs and there's a concern that uh, you know a large percentage well over half of the workforce is working with uh, improper uh, documentation uh, so uh, there's a lot of concern that this big enforcement force that uh, Trump wants coupled with these uh, this broad uh, prior list of priorities uh, for deportation that uh, you could see uh, ICE agents going back on to farms, uh, processing facilities and so forth, uh, fruit and vegetable, livestock and, and uh, poultry and saying, um, tossing out uh, a lot of workers or a lot of workers just not going to work because mm -hmm. um, they're fear for Right. So the ramifications of that is going to be something to follow here over the next couple of uh, weeks, months, uh, and, and years potentially, uh, because that's that's something that uh, the agricultural community was maybe not expecting as much. Uh, a lot of the talk was, as we mentioned, centric around that border wall, and all of a sudden there's this other facet of the immigration policy. Yeah, it's important. Uh, around about August, Trump during the campaign, Trump seemed to pivot from this deporting all illegal immigrants that had been sort of a theme early on in his campaign to specifically focus, focusing on uh, criminals, uh, violent criminals uh, uh, among the illegal immigrants. He very specifically just focused on saying that's where we'll that's where we'll put our focus. And quite frankly, that's not really any different than the Obama policy was. Obama had, uh, among other things, he had moved the enforcement force more toward the border. border. He had uh, put the emphasis on border security and was doing less in terms of interior uh, enforcement on workplaces and so forth. So with that, uh, if that strategy continued, that was not nearly as much of a, a problem for agriculture. It's this idea that, you know, we're going to do an enforcement surge uh, domestically on workplaces and um, potentially, you know, threaten a lot of people with uh, deportation. That's mm -hmm. where the problem really. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, this week there was also party retreats held on the greater eastern side of the coast. Democrats were in West Virginia and uh, the Republicans were in Philadelphia, as was Phil. Uh, he comes to us now with uh, fresh knowledge of the Republican platform going forward, as well as I imagine full of Philly cheesesteaks. I mean, <laughs> I, I know I would be if I spent some time in Philadelphia. But Phil, uh, looking forward uh, for the remainder of the 115th Congress, really the, the impression you got was that Republicans very focused on health care and tax reform. Those are the two biggest issues that everybody, at least in the House, seems to agree on. The, 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 Senate, the Senate is a little less clear on tax reform. Healthcare reform, repealing and replacing uh, Obamacare, that is priority number one. They want to get, a, 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 they want to get legislation moving uh, uh, by March. Uh, for the House, tax reform is also a very, very high priority. Um, We'll have to see how that goes. They want to. They want to have a bill. Uh, of course, tax legislation has to start in the House. They want to have a bill um, through the House uh, uh, by the, their August recess. Big question about what that's going to look like. And come back to that border tax issue. That is a fundamental part of the House um, tax reform plan. The idea is to put a tax on all imports coming into the country. Ta exports would not be taxed, raises a lot of money, it allows uh, a deep cuts in tax rates, it allows uh, for repeal of the estate tax uh, and some uh, expensing uh, benefits as well. So it's a very critical part of the House tax plan. Um, Trump was uh, initially uh, uh, critical of the of this border, it's called a border adjustment, initially very critical of it, and then all of a sudden, 
on Air Force One yesterday. Now he's a fan. Uh, they, they started talking <laughs> it up, so we'll see. Um, that's, but that's the uh, linchpin of the House plan. Mm -hmm. So those two things are really going to be the main topics to watch from a broader congressional perspective. Obviously, from an agricultural perspective, they got to do something about a farm bill at some point in the 115th Congress. If they don't pass a new one, they're going to need to extend the current legislation or revert back to permanent law. Uh, as Secretary Vilsack threatened, we'll see if uh, Secretary Purdue, should he be confirmed, will yeah. will follow through on the same level of threat. But that's that's going to be the, obviously the main agricultural linchpin of, of the 115th. Yeah, I think you'll see movement later in the year. They really, really don't want to have to extend this farm bill. It's, it's complicated. Has to, they're actually, fundamentally, there will probably be less money for them to work with if they wait beyond this Congress. And it's already going to be tough enough. They're worried about uh, cuts, uh, potential a new round of cuts. Um, so they very much need to get this uh, a new bill done in this Congress uh, before uh, the elections in uh, 2018. So I think we'll see uh, It'll be later in the year, but we'll start to see some uh, movement uh, on uh, uh, bill, uh, presumably in both uh, both chambers. Don't have a schedule yet, but uh, they want to get they want to get going uh, this year so they can wrap it up in uh, uh, 2018. And as Phil mentioned, no formal schedule. The only thing we do know at this point is that the Senate Agriculture Committee is planning on having uh, some some meetings, some listening sessions, some hearings, whatever the proper terminology is. They're going to Manhattan, Kansas, and uh, are, are going to talk Farm Bill, uh, presumably going to be going to Michigan as well uh, in uh, ranking member Debbie Stabenow's home state to uh, talk Farm Bill there as well. So some interesting things to follow here in Farm Bill policy. Things are starting to gear up toward that direction, and we'll obviously have more formal hearings, more formal announcements to cover here in the uh, weeks, months, and years ahead. But I think that's going to do it for this week. As we mentioned, a lot to unpack this week. Uh, presumably there will be a lot to unpack in the weeks to come as well. Uh, it's going to be a, an action-packed couple of weeks and months here as the 115th Congress gets underway and as we start off in the Donald Trump administration. Right. But for Phil Brasher, I'm Spencer Chase. Have a good one.